would say, around here. <laughs> <laughs> right? How about the situation in Bangladesh? Is this good? I mean, political system there. Uh, it's being called democratic, but it's kind of a hybrid, like Thailand. Okay, you can say, like Thailand. <laughs> Everyone can agree. Because quality uh -huh. election, mm. like, yeah. designed election. But democratic election, mm. but designed. Mm. Mm. I went to uh, Myanmar, actually just uh, three weeks ago, and I just realized that the situation there is much better than here. <laughs> much, much better. Uh -huh. um, any of you work for the government? I mean, you work for the government? Yes. Oh. I do. Ah. Wow. Most of us, I think. <laughs> okay. Mm. Interesting background. Could I ask? What uh, department? Uh, uh, for uh, you, yeah. In my country's uh, bureaucracy, is, you know, I can I can work in any, any place, in any ministry, any type. So uh, in coming here, I was working in the Ministry of ICT. ICT. It's telecom uh, and ICT, yes. Okay. But uh, I can work anywhere, any place. I, I used to work for public administration as well, Ministry of Public Administration. It's a common public administration. Mm. So it's uh, like uh, we are called core bureaucrat, like mm. government can appoint some of people in any ministries. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. government's nation. Okay. And how about people in this side? <laughs> the same uh, department? No, same no, ministry? No. no? no. 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 Mm. 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 I'm not really sure that uh, the topic that I'm going to share with you today um, fit into your background or not. Um, as Professor uh, Tina Touch introduced uh, me from the beginning, that I'm really positioned myself as a kind of uh, critical policy scorer and that usually make problem because a lot of uh, bureaucrats I would say a lot of uh, civil servant usually don't want to talk with me <laughs> 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 and that's a problem uh -huh. but something we need to share it's very important to step out, walk away from your boundary, mm -hmm. your routine, and even your worldview, I would say, your mindset. Mm -hmm. You don't need to uh, agree uh, everything that I propose today, actually just kind of um, the exchange between us. I share, and then you give me feedback and we discuss, I think it's maybe good for our class today. So it's not going to be a lecture, it's going to be a talk, right? I think you're already familiar with uh, the general policy design, which we usually start thinking about effectiveness, right? Before you make kind of policy uh, implementation or policy intervention. You're usually thinking about the goal, right? To achieve the goals. I don't know uh, about Myanmar, about Bangladesh or other places that you conform, but in my country, I would say uh, lovely 100% past the goal <laughs> because you usually set something that you can achieve, right? Or even you can find the evidence to prove that you achieve. But it doesn't mean that uh, you can change the society. You can cope with the problem, right? This is a problem. <laughs> the problem is you actually achieve the goal but nothing changed. Yeah. But we leave it that. Most of the policy uh, that we, if you look at the policy documents, 
in your department, in your ministry, you will see they set the goal and actually they just want to achieve it. So effectiveness is the first criteria come up in the head of the policy maker and even implementators, right? And if you could not achieve, you usually afraid about the promotion, right? The future of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't matter about the future of the society, but uh, it doesn't fair to say that because some challenge goal, right? You can make some change for sure. Yeah, I, I don't have any problem with that. For example, um, uh, if uh, this is flood around here, too much water, and you have a problem here, um, yes, of course, you want to uh, have some hero to come here and save you from the situation, right? The, uh, the disaster. So to achieve this, it means that. Uh, the government need to save you from the situation, uh, to protect you. Uh, for example, uh, they need to provide you some, uh, I would say, um, some um, life bag, uh -huh. the bag that contain food, you know, a lot of things inside. And of course, they need to guarantee that the amount of food inside the bag is enough for you. you know. If you need to survive here, for example, <coughs> the frost situation may take past three days. You need to have enough food, and even you know, um, maybe something inside that very useful for you, electricity or something, yeah. the light or something. Yeah. So that is something that we need for sure. The effectiveness. Yeah. We need to make it to help us, right? But then again, it doesn't mean that if uh, the government can do that by use uh, a thousand staff, ignore every everything and come to help you here, and use a thousand boats to carry and just uh, a light bag, a lot of light bag, and they need to throw it away because actually victim is just really uh, Lovely 20 people here, you know, but they prepare a lot uh, and they hope that, well, we're gonna satisfy with that. But in the end, this is effectiveness, but not efficiency, right? You spend a lot, you, um, and even you spend too much time, for example, you wait here two days, three days already, no one come. Then they come and they provide you food and they say, yeah, we finally come. You could not bear anything. Yes, you achieve your goal, the effectiveness, but it's not efficiency, right? So efficiency is about, of course, it's about finance. <laughs> it's, it's about time as well. Uh -huh. I don't have any problem with this. I think it's very important mm -hmm. to thinking about the general policy design like this. And the next one is sufficiency, I would say. Uh -huh. Yeah, I already mentioned about this. If they come, they set the goal that, we, uh, that they're going to help you by provide free back eat, you know, they can achieve their goal. If you get three back, you know, each of you get three backs, they achieve their goal. It's good policy design. But it doesn't mean that if you need to depend on such a life back for three days, you can survive, right? It's not enough for you. Uh -huh. They achieve that goal because that goal, they set just only three backs. Uh -huh. But the situation worse than that. Uh -huh. You need more. So it <coughs> might be achieved effectiveness, but not the sufficiency, right? And responsiveness is kind of uh, the idea of the populist uh, policy maker nowadays. I don't know what happened in Bangladesh, in Myanmar, uh, maybe somewhere else, right? Uh, where you come from? Uh, 
in Nepal. Wow, in the mountain. I dream to go there, to be honest. I need to have your card. <laughs> when you plan to go back home? Um, maybe not this year. I just came uh, almost one and a half month back from the holidays. So okay, so it's too late year. for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think usually people visit Nepal, especially for this reason, mm. uh, is for the birthplace of Buddha. Uh, mm. And that's for I. That's, that's that's flat. Mm. There is no mountain there. Mm. So it's a flat mm. plain like that. So I it, see. it shouldn't be a problem reaching to birth and Buddha. Ah. If you are very confident about just climbing mountains in the first attempt. I see. Ah, good. Wow. And thing that you need to do for you, you need you need to visit Bangladesh and Nepal. And for you, you need to visit Myanmar. You need to, yeah. Yeah. Professor, when you were saying this, I was just mm. thinking, mm -hmm. um, in today's world... Don't, don't call me professor, we have friends, we, yeah, you can call me Pia Pong, yeah, okay? That's, uh. that's a difficult name, Professor, can we... Can we you can call me Pong, okay? Pong, Pong yeah. No, it's easy name, yeah. Pia Pong, yeah. it's very easy. <laughs> uh, okay. It's about culture. Yeah, yeah. it's about uh. our countries. Yes, you know. Yes, okay. You, you um, mean someone there named... Pia Pia, Pia. Pia. Pia is common. What does it mean in your country? <laughs> positive or negative? Yeah, positive. Positive, Lava. okay. It's yeah. okay. Lava, Lava. Yeah. Okay, love? Lava. Ac actually, it's the same. It also means love here. Yes. Be loved by other people, right? Yes. Pia okay, okay, the same. So maybe, oh, I, yeah, we have something in common. Yeah. Sanskrit. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, what I was thinking is, mm. um, in today's world, is there really a problem with policy design? Because globally, whenever if we see policies, uh -huh. most of the policies are copy-based. Uh -huh. I mean, with the team... Oh, see, that very... It's with, all blessed. <laughs> yes, with the team, uh -huh. you see, I will uh -huh. just take one very, very simple statement, uh -huh. which almost all the constitutions globally use, uh -huh. where they say that all people, all citizens. Mm -hmm. Previously, they used to write all men are equal because mm -hmm. we're talking so much about inclusive, mm -hmm. etc., etc. So the statement has changed, and now most of the constitutions have saying all citizens are equal. Uh -huh. So this is this is a very simple statement which you uh -huh. find all, in almost all the constitutions that exist on this earth. Mm. But are they really equal? Yeah, yeah it's totally right, but it's hopeless plan and. Um, for example, if I want to talking about uh, policy making, yeah, and then the student usually uh, raise the question, this topic is not relevant to me because I don't think that I can be a policy maker. Only few policy maker in my country, for example. In Thailand, I would say just only very few, very, very few. Actually, that, that's how it goes. Uh, because, mm -hmm. for example, if she works in the Ministry of Finance, and mm -hmm. if, there is a, if there is a deadline trying to work on a tax policy, uh -huh. the first thing, mm -hmm. the first thing, everybody, whoever, is, is, if it is a policy maker or not, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Irrespective of that, the first thing that somebody will start trying to work on a tax policy is mm -hmm. trying to look for tax policies in the United States, mm -hmm. trying to look for tax policy in Australia, trying to look for tax policy all around the world. Mm -hmm. So you have a literature first. Mm -hmm. which you are reviewing uh -huh. and then you are coming up with your tax policy mm -hmm. so you're bringing all the best whichever you think is the best mm -hmm. to your policy mm -hmm. that's that's how usually everything is done around the globe now so that's why I'm saying mm -hmm. because we're trying to bring everything best from all the places that we know mm -hmm. so is there really a problem with policy design mm -hmm. I, I think um, the problem usually yeah, yeah. is impl implementation with design I don't think there remains a problem anymore it's, it's something that we can do for example uh, I, I, I would keep uh, um, continuing from the previous statement that when we're talking about policy maker, making people usually say, well, I could not be a policy maker. When we're talking about policy analysis, people say, okay, I can be a policy analyst, but then, well, it's mostly depend on 
economic uh, analysis, right? Mostly, mm. mostly, not not everything, but mostly. And I think it's not enough. But when you say, okay, policy design, it means that you can, everyone can be policy designer, right? Yeah. When you when you say that you want to be policy designer, even you're not the public sector, you not work for the public sector, you're just a civil society, you can propose the policy brief, you can propose the po policy proposal that provide a better design of the policy, you know. Yes, but in the end of the day, I don't come here to protect the approach. I think it's very, very useful for us to attach it, you know. I mean, we need to, we need to uh, raise the question. We need to challenge. It's very important to do that. And you is the right man to do that. But there may be something that we can do. Uh -huh. And this is one thing we can do. But it's not everything. Actually, a lot of challenge. And we're going to discuss about this in the end of the class. And I hope you can keep more, keep more, keep more. I like it. I really like it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So now, what I try to, to say is I forget totally about policy analysis and policy making. I never say that anymore. Because I think everyone relates somehow to public policy. And you have a good idea. You can give some feedback, recommendation on your Facebook at least, you know. <laughs> at least on your own spare. You have your own spare. You can talk to public to propose the better design of the whole process, right? And that's it mean uh, you become policy designer already, yeah. So no policy designer as a position in your government. No, not there, not here, and not in my country. Because this is a position of everyone you can be. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's only one position that we can be in the field of public policy nowadays. Uh -huh. Okay, if you say responsiveness, it means that it not really about the basic need, but somehow it's about what people want as well. Yeah. You need to respond what people want, even if it's not the basic need. Yeah. Yes, of course, people in new generation, they're usually thinking about, uh, wow, uh, disaster, and then I don't have any electric city. That's terrible. Because of what? Because we could not access to our mobile, right? We need to use uh, Facebook. We need to use Line to contact other people outside. It's a kind of uh, the, the root routinization of the new generation. So apart from the Line Bank, the government can provide the power bank, right? And it's not the basic need, but it's something that responsive need to what people want, right? Yeah. And then it's about safety, security, of course, they need to thinking about the crocodile, snake, <laughs> you know, during fraud, a lot of, you know, animal. Uh, and even, you know, some people might just come and store something from you, you know, it's possible during crisis. So, um, I don't have any problem uh, with this. We need to do this. We need to protect the security. And this is something that I would say, uh, we don't want, we don't need to say anything about this anymore in our country because the government already thinking about this all the time. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but in Thailand, every policy, the government usually, you know, thinking about security, <laughs> security first. Uh -huh. And the definition of security nowadays extend from just, you know, just about uh, the, the army, the war to everything, right? Uh -huh. mm. And then it affects your privacy as well. Uh -huh. 
And Apple PNS is mostly about uh, thinking about the culture. Uh, of course, you need to prepare your staff if you want to help the, um, for example, um, the woman or even uh, the monk. Uh, would this monk, for example, who also affected by fraud, right? Yes, of course, you could not throw a bat into the head, right? They need, you need to propose that bat properly to the Buddhist monk. This is about culture, yeah. but it's important, right? And you could not just open the door and, yeah, we're coming, we help you, you said, but you know, woman there. You need to, you know, it's kind of it's culture. You need to, uh, we're gonna come in, are you ready? Uh, Something like that, right? Uh, it's about culture, mostly culture, appropriateness. And now they are uh, the general policy design, so thinking about smarter policy. You have something to add? No? Okay. Um, what does it mean by smart? Um, let me think. Hmm. For example, um, they can use drone, drone and, and drop the life back, you know. They don't need to use a uh, general boat or even the main uh, public transportation to come here, right? They can fly drone, you know. Hell, I heard that somewhere in the world they already use this already. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, now they, I think, uh, smart become the new criteria that every state, every city, give a priority into it. Uh, no one ignore smart anymore. You know? And actually, I saw something <laughs> down there. Um, here also smart campus, right? <laughs> okay, so what, what does it mean by smart campus? Uh, what, what is the, I mean, what the system, what, 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 why they call smart? I just want to know. Uh, I mean, just give the example. Uh, any drone around here? No. No, no. It's about um, information technology, something like this? Yes, yes. So you have a kind of access, Wi Fi everywhere yeah, in the yeah, building? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And then what? Smart library. Smart library, what does it mean? It's electric library. Ah, okay. So you could not... Uh, mm. you can so forget about walking into the library <laughs> and smell the book, right? No, both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Physical books are available. Yeah. At the same time, we can available electronic documents as well. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I have a very big problem about this smart idea, you know. Because if I could not touch it, I could not understand it, you know. I mean, it's, it's weird for me, I, I, I saw some people, they read some tech in their mobile. I think mobile is something for me, it's very informal to use in your everyday life, right? But when you're reading, it should be I don't know, but intellectual needs something that you can touch, you can smell, but yeah, I'm old fashioned, uh, forget about that. But I mean, in the future, you're gonna lose it for sure. No one gonna buy a book from the shop. And I heard that a lot of bookshop already. Good. Yeah, 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 <laughs> very, very bad. And even the one that exists, if you walk around in the, in, into the bookstore, you will see just only kind of, it's not intellectual book at all. You know? It's mostly about, I don't know, like literature and so on. We have a okay. Amazon. Yeah, thank you, smart city, smart world. <laughs> mm. Okay, the point is, we live in the world that smart become the new criteria. Uh, key consideration in making a good policy. Uh -huh. 
and people uh, already mentioned about if you study uh, in public administration or public policy, whatever, and you could not do data analytics, yeah. you could not use the big data to analyze and to propose something from the information that generate all around the world, you totally bad policy analyst. And people already talking about, forget about policy analysis, just talking about policy data analytics, right? Because of uh, the big data, the, the smart thing, right? And recently, I, I, I don't know, but some of you may heard about rapid mining. Do you, 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 do you heard about this? The name of the software, the application. Mm -hmm. And is this a kind of uh, machine learning? When I uh, when I did my PhD, you know, I need to generate a lot of uh, data by myself. I need to touch the, the land, touch the people, knock the door, and after I generate data, I need to think very carefully you know, to test relationship, you know, the correlation, ligation, and I need to understand uh, how its uh, statistical analysis work, right? I need to carefully learn about that. But then, after the rapid miner come up, just recently, I would say, and this is a machine learning, you just need to put every information you have into it and then it calculate everything you don't need to have a kind of uh, the model of uh, this is x this is y you don't need even explore the literature the research to see uh, the, the possible relationship and to develop the hypothesis at all because they're gonna analyze everything and if some of you has ever analyzed uh, by using kind of uh, uh, the basic statistical tool for example SPSS or R or Stata you need to match the variable right and maybe spend a whole day or maybe a week to analyze everything, but you need to think, you need to learn along the process. Oh, this is significant, this is not significant, right? Yeah. But now, Flynn, I would say the rapid mining come, and you don't need to learn anything. They just use only one minute to calculate everything, to figure out the correlation, the ligation, the relationship of everything that you put into, into it. <laughs> only one minute. So the problem is that if we go too smart, we're gonna stupid, I would say, because we stop learning. We learn nothing. We don't need to understand how it uh, statistical analysis work. You don't need to know the difference between uh, chi square and correlation anymore. You don't need to learn about how t test and f test different one way and no why and everything. You know. Forget about that because machine already do that for you and you just put it in. You know. So the question is, well, I'm not sure that we gonna smart, you know, <laughs> because we stopped learning already. Yes. Mm. And then, of course, freedom of choice, uh -huh. liberty, autonomy, Okay, for example, you may have uh, different life back. Mm -hmm. You have uh, the red one, the yellow one. I don't want to use this color. You may have uh, orange one, right? Uh -huh. And blue one, for example. And different life back provide different things. Mm. And the red one might fit to um, kind of uh, gas route, uh, the 
general one may fit into kind of a bureaucrat and military, for example. The orange one may fit to the new generation, uh, young bat. Uh, you have a child. You don't have only one bat and throw it into everyone. It's not one size fit all. You have freedom of choice. You can shoot. Of course, some limit, for sure. We live in a world with limitation, of course. Limit resort, limit everything. So it's, you have freedom of choice and the kind of uh, the condition that we have. But the main argument here is that I'm sure that you had ever heard about the classic work named Policy Paradox by the Bora uh, Stone long time ago, but still classic at the moment. It doesn't mean that if you gonna go for efficiency and then you can achieve justice or, or even the equality. And that's why they call uh, chi call, I would say, paradox. Yeah, but a lot of people in my country, they're still very romantic. They usually keep telling us, the people, that, well, uh, we need to go for the economic growth, but don't worry. We take care of the vulnerable people, and we will uh, enhance their quality of life. So we do both. We have uh, economic growth, and we have justice. Yeah. The point is, do you have any example of that? No, because it's paradox. I just discussed with uh, someone hmm, about the problem of water, the same topic, but it's not about too much water, but too little. It's about water provision, it was uh, water supply at the moment. You may already know about this. We have a lot of a big problem about this uh, because this year going to have very few water supply. Uh, if you go for efficiency, for example, you want to see the GDP, of course you need to provide water into EEC, right? Special economic zone, for sure. You need to provide to industry first. Because GDP is on the hand. Mm -hmm. And of course, forget about farmer, right? Mm -hmm. And I would say we do this for more than decades already. So if effectiveness and efficiency can generate equality, equity, or justice, why the gap between the rich and the poor acted like this? So it's proof that it failed. <laughs> it's not come along well with it other. Actually, it's something that you need to take off. In the end of the day, the discussion that uh, I mentioned about, we end up with the idea that we need to lead thinking about the water governance policy. The problem is not about the water supply. It's not about uh, the, the shortage of water, but actually it's about the priority regime. Priority regime, what does it mean? It's bigger than political regime, I would say. Oh, I don't want to say that, but uh, the dictator who um, gave a priority to the poor, I mean, he still look cute, right? <laughs> look, okay, cute dictator, right? Even we have an authoritarian regime, but give a priority to the poor more than the rich. 
look better than the democratic regime that have a very biased priority regime, right? I don't, I, I don't want to compare its politics. I just want to say that priority regimes is very important. Mm -hmm. You need to, you need to priority because you could not take anything here. <coughs> If you want to go for this, you may lose this, and it proof for the whole, I would say, history of our world that it could not come together. You need to, you need to choose. You need to trade off, and that is the essence of the book, policy paradox, right? The problem is when you go back home to your ministry department. At least you need to question about this, about the priority regime, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you set the goal that everyone in the um, the victim, everyone in the community here. Need to be so why? You need to provide everyone with the life back, right? But it doesn't mean that everyone did the same amount of the life back, right? Mm -hmm. Some vulnerable people there, yeah. children, martyr, and even disabled people. Uh -huh. So somehow, if it slow down, but you can save <coughs> the vulnerable people, it's much better than you rush. But some people could not follow you. Uh -huh. You just leave them behind, right? Uh -huh. The three things uh, are a bit different. The equality means that you need to uh, provide everyone with the same amount, right? Equal treatment, but equality is mean that you need to support what they need, right? It's a kind of different uh, people need different thing. One is not equal need. You need to focus on need, not one, right? But justice is that. The systemic barrier need to be removed, and if we go back to the issue of fraud, of course, what you need to do is to destroy the priority regime. Right? This is the big barrier because you always protect the industrial area first, for sure. It's happened here. It happened everywhere. I would say, and the one who need to satisfy. We need to sacrifice is farmer, right? And they usually just simply call their farming area as a flat way. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you might say that. Well, but we need to do that because of industry. It's very important. It's, we need to protect it. Yes, we born with. This my said. I just re re refresh the um, idea. If someone uh, visit you at home, uh -huh. and then suddenly um, the robber come to your house, uh -huh. you have a small kid there, beautiful wife. And a guest who come mostly uh, okay two guests, one come from uh, Europe and one come from Japan. Uh -huh. So if you think the idea that uh, we need to protect the industrial first, you will protect your guest. Okay, kill my son. <laughs> The weak, the weakest, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then my wife, and you need to protect your guest. 
It's the same, friend. Uh -huh. You need to protect, but, but in fact, you need to protect the most vulnerable group, right? Uh -huh. So go back and discuss with your government. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that, well, this is very critical, radical, and they're going to fire me from the office. It's just kind of, uh, just stimulate uh, people to think, I think. Uh -huh. And then something that I think we not really thinking about is ethics, right? It's sustainability, human rights, and democratic value. The point, the very important point here is, is this. This is come from Stone Book, uh -huh. the third edition, I would say, uh, the second edition, maybe. Uh -huh. You need to take off, friend. You need to do that. You could not take everything. It's not a kind of win-win situation. Water amount of water come, the mass of water come, the end of the day, you need to choose that you're going to protect the industrial area or farming area first. It's, you could not take anything, friend. Yeah. And this is something that happens everywhere in the world. You protect the leash, you protect uh, the industrial sector, for example, reduce tax, uh, tax expenditure. Because you want to make a kind of incentive structure for them to come to invest in your country, right? Uh, come friend, we will accept your, your tax, tax exception. Uh, and maybe um, you're going to for example, um, destroy or not allow to build any chair or any public um, facility because you don't want to have the homeless people to walk around. Uh -huh. Because the investor might feel like, well, they, want, they don't want to come because it's look uh, unsafety. And this happened in San Francisco. Uh -huh. San Francisco, they're gonna be, they want to be a kind of a innovative city, right? And they have a lot of startup, a lot of uh, digital nomad in the San Francisco. But some part of San Francisco is a lot of uh, homeless as well. It's the city of homeless, actually. And uh, the mayor come and say that, well, we need to do something about this. We need to deal with the homeless. Because more startup, more innovator depend on this. They don't want to come because it looks uncivilized, right? This is uh, the thing that happened in our world. We need to raise the question, at least raise the question and propose some alternative. This is happen, you know. Like this, protect help the rich tech cut, for example. And then this is kind of uh, the idea that so the poor we're gonna be more active because if they rich they can access, they can get that's supported by the government, <laughs> you see? And you need to, you know, um, reduce the welfare, everything, because that make people, the poor people, uh, stay still, don't want to change their behavior, don't struggle because they have welfare already. This is something that happened in our world now. I mean, most people thinking this way. So then the rich take everything, the poor take nothing. Yeah. Or maybe take something. Take something. 800 baht, 600 baht per month. Yeah. 
but the rich well come EEC you know economic zone we welcome you and you don't need to pay any tax for 10 years for example yeah and it's simple another picture from the same books you know? this is something that happened in your family your sister or your brother bigger than you so could eat more right <laughs> in economic system the one who contribute more in the economic development take more yeah the same but if you be that guy the small guy i think it's very simple to make sense even by a kid right that is not fair but when it comes into the real world, we usually ignore it. We not raise a good question, I would say. If people in our field don't raise such question, who gonna raise it, right? Yeah. It's our responsibility to raise the question, the right question. Not just keep continuing it or just legitimize and endorse this way, right? Yeah. So this is very simple, and it's just the beginning of uh, our discussion today, even it already passed to one hour already, yeah. just only first two slides. Yeah. Then, why we need the more inclusive, I would say, uh -huh. more inclusiveness? In our world, I already mentioned something about uh, this. Okay, I gonna uh, highlight the last one. I think it's very very important to say this because what happened uh, in my country. I don't know anything about your country, but I know well about my country. Most of uh, the civil servants, they need to look at the legal and institutional document. You know, they need to look at, well, this is uh, allow them to do or not. Yeah. They need to open the manual and the regulation. This is the one thing. The second thing, policy analysis, planners in the department, they need to thinking about the good policy, and that doesn't mean that they need to do something that make them a problem, for example. If I work for the Department of Health, I'm gonna I have only one week to finish this. So I just try to do it by, by my own hand, with my knowledge. I don't think that I need to go outside and ask people. Spend a lot of time, and maybe I need to pay more money in my own budget, right? Mm -hmm. So what I try to say that it's not about the mindset, but it is about the policy culture of our world that we usually thinking in terms of uh, regal institutional rationality and perhaps with economic rationality. And we usually ignore democratic process. Yeah. It's something that we think that it adds something on our hand. We have a lot already in our hand. So participation, well, I agree with it. 
Because if you say no to participation, it look like you racism, right? It look like you narcissism. So you need to say that. Well, I'm agree with participation. But if you need to do that, oh my God, I have a lot to do already in my hand, right? And that's why the system, the culture like this, could not go. Anywhere, friend, it's go nowhere. Uh, it's just there, every day, every month. It's routinized in your life. Mm -hmm. You live with deadline. You live with constraint. You live with expectation from your expertise. Well, if you need to do a kind of uh, policy by asking people why we need to pay for you. You pay for your expertise. You need to do it yourself. You see what the, you know, your boss usually think, right? Okay, so um, I start with a hopeless. For us to think that, so this is the reason we need different approach And we call it inclusive policy design. Uh -huh. Not we, actually, it's proposed by UNESCO. Uh -huh. And it comes from uh, the idea of inclusive design uh -huh. from urban planning uh -huh. to the boundary of policy analysis, uh -huh. public policy. Uh -huh. And then, this is a uh, most important slide, yeah. just really for topic that I'm going to exchange with you. The first one is inclusive structures. Yeah. The second one is inclusive ends. And the last one is inclusive means. But you still need inclusive mindset as a kind of the input of this. Mm -hmm. What does it mean by inclusive mindset? It means that you need to understand this word. Mm -hmm. Come back to the discussion uh, that we're talking about uh, flooding and the problem of uh, priority regimes, right? The mindset is that you need to protect the vulnerable group first. Uh -huh. You need to trade off justice over efficiency. Uh -huh. And stop saying that we can take everything because it's impossible. Uh -huh. And that's why policy paradox become the most influencing books in public policy yeah. and I would say the most important books in our field. Mm -hmm. I trust that you already read it. Mm -hmm. If you not, please go back and read it. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. And yes, you have smart lively. <laughs> <laughs> so the mindset it's something that we already discussed. Uh -huh. But then, how about the structure? Uh -huh. Mostly it's about recognition. The first one is political recognition. This is very important to say that if you depoliticize policy analysis or policy studies, forget about the real change. Policy always politics. The problem that, that we face at the moment is that, for example, the panel that I mentioned about is about uh, water supply. Uh -huh. People, they walk from the south of Thailand, walk, 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 spend 30 days, spend a month, walk from uh, Yala until 
here in Bangkok. And actually, they also moved into the east as well, the south and the east, and come to Bangkok. They are affected by the policy, water supply policy. And the place, they want to do this walk and uh, extend uh, the network, expand the network to um, stimulate other to realize that they have a problem and they need to do something. They also clear the Facebook page. And they call it as a kind of a writing future together by the people. Uh -huh. They think that the government always write down the future for us. But they don't want to know what kind of the future the people want to, want to go for, want to be, right? So, along the way, for the 30 days, what they do is try to develop the alternative future. That people have been recognized in the policy of the water supply. They're talking about, well, we have only few water, but you talking about EEC, it's kind of special economic zone. Uh -huh. You're talking about the new uh, city, I would say. You're talking about the new apartment, uh -huh. talking about the luxury hotel, And then you plan to take water from farmer to them. Yeah. This is something that call political ill-recognition, ill-recognition, I would say. Yeah. And 30 day walking by fan stimulate the awareness, walk here to Bangkok and organize kind of uh, uh, the, the forum, right? actually in the, um, nearby Ma Bun Kong, right? opposite to Ma Bun Kong. And today they also make a kind of uh, continued discussion in, uh, at Jula Longkorn University, talking about something like this. The most important is to enhance the political recognition. We hear, uh, call us, mm -hmm. and this is very important. Uh, a lot of people are missing from the policy, uh, invisible. Friend, especially from Myanmar, you need to say something about this because it's totally true that we're talking about economic zone in the border town because we want to exploit, I would say, exploitation, you know, the worker from your country. No right, no welfare, low salary. Yeah. And if you have problem, go back to your home. Yeah. And this is the key factor of the achievement of the economic zone in the border town. Yeah. Why don't you Establish the 
um, economic zone in the middle of the country where you usually open it, establish it in the border town. It's always about exploitation, but no one, I mean, just only a few people talk explicitly about this. And when you talk with the investor, come, you can exploit them. We have a labor, very cheap. So, Myanmar labor is a very good example of political recognition, right? And then cultural recognition. I now live in the north of Thailand. It's a bit different from here. You also face the problem of hairs as well here. Terrible, maybe the same. But in the north, what happened is that everyone blame the mountain people. You burn. This is the cause of the problem. Because you burn. But actually burning in the mountain is part of the cultural practices, I would say. Uh, cultural practice. But the point is, it doesn't mean that every problem that we face comes from them. A lot of urban activities also generate pollution. A lot of industry there. But it's better to ignore mountain or uh, to blame mountain people because they could not do anything, right? <laughs> it's easy to do that. Recently, actually just a few days ago, the research showed that his pollution is a part of climate change. What does it mean by this? It's a part of climate change. What does it mean? It means that you, me, everyone here, contribute to it. Well, maybe more than them, more than mountain people. But not only the state, I would say, the citizen in general, we feel better to find someone to bam, right? Bam them, they are uh, traditional, that shit. It's, you need to be more civilization. Why you still burn in your, in your you know, farmland? Well, but the contribution. You, you know, a lot of people now, they live in the city, man. Yeah. And some people there, they um, kind of uh, argue that, well, yes, they burn, but then they can protect it. I mean, they can protect, they can control the fly, right? Yeah. I don't want to say that they're right or they're wrong, but it's, again, it's not fair. It's not fair because you just burn, uh, blame them, but not blame yourself. You also contribute to it, friend. Uh -huh. mm. So that's why um, cultural recognition also something that embedded in the structure and we usually ignore it. So when you start thinking about inclusive policy design, look at the structure first. Who missing there? By political recognition or cultural recognition. Okay, and this is the, the first uh, dimension. The second one is of course, inclusive end. It's about uh, thinking about the outcome, the impact of the policy. 
This is the group of the people who can be called the vulnerable people, vulnerable group. Yeah. You can see, uh, well, a lot of people here, even sex workers, they children, often homeless, uh, so on. Mobile worker, right? Mobile worker from Myanmar. You need to concern about this. Uh, you need to raise voice. Uh, disabilities, uh, the illness, people with HIV. The point is, some people may uh, say that, well, um, what does it mean by fair? You may say, fair, fairness should be no bias. It means that we should not take special care of special people. We need to provide everything equally. Some people may say this. And this is fairness. They may say that. But it's very strong statement, it's very strong argument, I would say. It's very important to note that when you say you are neutral, uh, when you say you are neutral, you do something which are biased. You always bias to the rich, to the advantage group in the society because the structure that we live at the moment someone take benefit from it and someone become disadvantaged group so if you do nothing you just legitimize the existing system structure you always buy as to the rich always because the system itself Bias to the leash. You do nothing. You just endorse it. It means you endorse it. You legitimize the system. We all legitimize the unjust system. Well, some people may say, well, I come from... Uh, the country that um, everything is very good, we have a justice system, we have kind of sustainable development, uh, we have a green future, and young people have a bright future. Even you say that, for example, uh, you may not believe, but it's true. In the big city, like London, yeah. in the UK, they found that there are seven classes, seven class in the city. What does it mean by that? It means that even you are in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, you live in your working day or in the summer less, Sunday less. Always injustice everywhere. Uh -huh. I mean, it's very important um, point to think. Uh -huh. Everywhere, it's everywhere, even in this room. I don't know, but I think some of you might more struggle than others, in the sense that you might thinking about, well, um, uh, yes, a, a, a uh, gain scholarship, but it's not too much, for example. And some people may, well, um, you're very lucky, you can scholarship, I have nothing. I need to earn money by myself. Someone may say, well, I also need to earn money by myself, but I, uh, 
uh, I just uh, ask it for uh, m- my dad, for example. Right? So different people in this room struggle differently. And that is something uh, very common in our world. But uh, when we're talking about common, it doesn't mean that it's normal. Common is not normal. But the point is, we live in a society that we make this as a new normal. As a normal. We normalize it. We don't ask the question. We just let it be, let it go. And that's why we study public policy. It doesn't make any change at all. If you could not talking about the inclusive and like this. So we have only two choices. Poor poor or poor rich. Only two choices. No neutral. And the government all around the world, very sad, you know, in neoliberal capitalism and everything think about, right? All government all around the world, Polish more than poor poor, for sure, yeah. Only some countries, Ethiopia, Argentina, and uh, people talking about Thailand in uh, in some era, but I'm not really sure uh, that is this uh, really poor, poor policy. But somehow, somehow, but not really sure. <laughs> so, Flynn, um, I hope that if you go back to your country go back to your ministry, thinking about this. It doesn't mean that we need to chip from Polish to poor poor. It's not like black and white. It's like um, from this to this, you need to come like this, right? It's not a chip, but it's a transformation. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, transition, that's fine. But transformation may be better. You just need to more inclusive. I don't say that you need to go for extremely inclusive, right? Inclusiveness has a different degree. Uh-huh. Okay, how about um, five minute bags? Is that a good idea? Or normally you. Um, do you want to have a short break? Okay, we can uh, raise the hand. It's a kind of inclusive way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who who want to take a break? Okay. 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 Friends, sorry that you become a minority. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh-huh. Uh, let's say um, someone that the um, it is very important to uh, talking about voting right is you know someone who have a problem because they need to go to the toilet right <laughs> even there is a minority but they are not in the normal situation like the other it's something uh, terrible. <laughs> so, from here, you need to what? Yeah, you need to blow the vulnerable. So we need to take a five minute break okay, <laughs> and come back. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs>